Okay, so let's get started. Thank you all for coming. What a great turnout. Um, we have actually, I, I was told we had 500 people RSVP to this across the different meetups we're advertising. So, you know, I, I think we probably got half of those, uh, close to half of those in the, in the room here, or maybe 40% in the room. Uh, we just couldn't fit anymore. So, um, just to give me a, how many people are students here? Is everybody? Yeah? No? Not everybody? How many people are working? Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Um, how many people here have programming skills? They've done some Java development. Excellent. How many people here have, know how to deploy Hadoop? Okay. Like, not there. <laughs> okay. Um, how many people have heard of Spark? Great. How many people have used Spark? A uh, few. Okay. Great. So, uh, so well, I think it sounds like you're in the right place. Um, I don't normally run this session. I normally have a day job at IBM, and uh, that's me there, Paul Yip. Uh, I'm actually uh, responsible for worldwide product strategy for Hadoop and Spark. So I've been kind of living and breathing this for the last um, few years. I've helped customers deploy this stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm working on my Spark skills, like a lot of people. So I'm not an expert yet, but uh, I know a lot about the industry. And uh, so I'm going to, today, uh, cover what is big data. Because that's, I mean, just based on the, I'm following what the, uh, what, what the meetup description was. Well, well, what is the thing, big data, what makes it big, right? And what problems are we solving? And what, what, is, what is happening in the market today? And what is everyone trying to do with this? And why wasn't data big before, right? Why is it big now? And, and how we attack the problem. Okay, so I'm going to go into a, a lot of Hadoop, a bit of Spark, uh, and then during the break, I'm going to try and get my internet working. If I can get that working, then I'm going to show a demo of how you can get started too, because we've got these free environments where you can uh, log in and, and kind of get active with it, okay? So with that said, uh, I'll try to keep on time. So uh, introduction to big data. Any questions before we begin? Okay, I, I, don't, I didn't expect any. Okay, so let's, let's, let's kind of get started, right? So um, this is a picture of a, a, a guy who probably participated in the gold rush. And you know the way they used to pan for gold is they would go into the riverbed, they would pan the, the, the rocks and pebbles or whatever, they would find some golden nuggets. And if they find one, they would go and they would say, oh, okay, yeah, there must be more. Where did it come from? It might fall upstream. They might look at the side of the mountain and see kind of like a vein of gold. And they go, oh, okay, there must be more, right? And so that's where they will go and, you know, you hear about the California gold rush, right? They found some gold and everybody heads there thinking, that well, there must be more. And this is kind of like how we build databases today. Uh, and, you know, databases are kind of the center of information for a lot of organizations where uh, we collect and organize information so we can ask questions about the data. And, you know, you'd be surprised, you know, when I was coming out of school a long time ago, play a game called Guess My Age a little bit later. Um, <laughs> you know, you think coming out of school that like all the big businesses and all the large organizations that work with data have all their act together, right? And you'd find that there's a mixed bag of, uh, of activity. There are companies that have areas within the companies that are very organized with their data and some that are not. Some are really struggling to get that thing working. And so uh, um, when it comes to actually finding gold, we'll, we'll call gold the value in the data. When I want to look at my data, I want to make a decision on the data. That's the gold. Um, the way we approached it was we would go to our systems of uh, interaction with our customers, where we take orders, where we have customer service in, uh, interactions, uh, our, our, you know, our, our supply chain systems, and we go in there, we grab what we think was valuable, right? We go to where we knew the gold was. But actually, we would, we would, we would acknowledge that there's actually tons of data in the environment, the internal and external, that actually is valuable too, but we just don't know how to analyze it, nor it would be just too expensive to analyze that data. And so, you know, today when we build warehouses uh, and, and databases, we kind of intrinsically know where that gold is, and we go to that source, we procure that subset of data, we bring it into an analytical environment, and then we analyze it and, and make a decision on it, okay? Now, this is how we did, you know, gold mining before, this is how we do it today, right? This is a, a picture of an open pit mine, okay, and that is a full-size tractor trailer at the bottom in that picture. And 
And what they're doing here is they're just digging up, they're mining all the dirt. And they know that the, in there, there's little tiny particles of gold, maybe some large, maybe some small. And, and what's really happened is, you know, the technology now exists for us to extract very, very small piece, bits of gold, like very low parts per million, and actually combine them together to create gold bars, right? And there's enough gold particles in that pit of soil that we, it, it's worthwhile to do. And the only thing that's changed between the guy who was panning for gold and the guy in this, this, this organization now that's, that's mining dirt and extracting gold is that the technology has enabled them to do this, right? It's become cost effective to do it. So, so just that, that question, um, you know, why now and why big data now? Why didn't we have big data before? I think we've always had a lot of data to deal with. We just didn't have the capability or the cost curve was, was, was not appropriate for attacking that data for, for most organizations. So really in a big data world, right, technology exists for us to store everything for as long as we want, if efficiently analyze everything without subsetting. If you have a statistical kind of an analytics background, you know, we know that subsetting introduces, increases our margin of error and, and makes it more difficult to get accurate results, right? So with big data, we, we can actually do stuff with, we can avoid subsetting in more, in more and more, more cases. You know, again, just like that example, tiny nuggets of valuable information now can be, can be buried in piles of worthless bytes. And so we can actually have the technology, the cost is, is so low now, we can, we can actually mine the dirt, right? We can collect all the bytes and, and find the value in there. We may not know what we're finding just yet, but we know it's there, right? So give you a couple of examples, right? This is um, a package delivery company you're probably familiar with. And, and what they're doing here is they put sensors, they've always, they've been delivering package for many years, right? But you think about when a delivery truck breaks down, how costly is that? They have to, it's gonna be an unexpected event. They're gonna have, they have deliveries on that truck. They're gonna to have to go and find an alternative truck to pick up where that truck left off. They're gonna to have to tow that broken down truck to a place to get a service. We don't know what it's gonna be. We're gonna to have to see what's wrong with it. We're gonna to have to find the parts to replace the part that's broken to get the truck back on the road. Maybe that part is not in stock, right? Uh, and, and so, there's all these factors that uh, these unexpected service events are very, very costly, actually. Um, and then, and then not, not to mention those products are delivered late, there's often uh, penalties, there's service delivery guarantees, right? So now all the money that we had you know, collected to deliver those packages, we gotta refund them to the client now. So very costly. And so before big data, right, we, we just sucked it up and dealt with it. But now what they're doing is they're actually putting sensors and you hear about Internet of Things and things like that, so you know, machine data. They're actually now mounting sensors on the trucks in different parts and capturing things like vibration levels, heat levels, things like that on different areas of the truck so that they can look at patterns, right? So when something breaks, maybe there's a wobble somewhere or maybe there's a, a change in the status. You've got a brand new truck, everything works great, and over time, you, you break out of those norms and you can predict something is going to break, right? And if you collect enough data, you can actually get pre predictive about it too, because you've got data that you can build predictive models. Okay, this vibration means that within 30 days something's gonna happen on this part, right? So now what we can do is we can say, you know, that truck is out of its normal zone, it's still on the road, but it's out of its normal zone. Uh, let's take it in for a scheduled service repair. We know what parts need to get serviced. We, can, we, can, we, we won't take a, a, a penalty on missed deliveries, right? And so this is a very good example of using data to get a competitive advantage, reduce cost, uh, improve service levels, okay? Well, what else can we use for big data? Well, you probably already know this uh, in the back of your mind, but pretty much every large organization, in fact, I would say new organizations too. So, uh, so let, me, let me explain what I mean by that. Certainly large organizations are now looking at uh, think of a bank, for example, right? You, you might deal with a bank, you take a mortgage, you have checking accounts, savings accounts, RRSPs, you have life insurance, you have all these things that you do, interactions with the bank, right? You buy travel insurance with them, right? Um, but you might be surprised that the banks actually are, you know, many, they're organized into silos of organizations. 
And in fact, they, 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 they're trying very hard to get to know who you are as a person. Because when they know who you are, they can serve you better. And if they can serve you better, that's a competitive advantage, right? In fact, if I'm a bank and I'm not doing this, and my competitor is, it's shame on me for not doing it because I have everything to lose, right? So, you know, it used to be that we do these segmentations on customer behavior, but you know, now we're trying to get down to a micro level where, um, and this might scare you, right? You know, rather than you know, who's this person, we can actually you know, collect up information, aggregate your contact information, your context, you know, external information, internal information, information across different silos of the organization, and actually figure out that, you know, hey, you are you know, Rita. Rita is a real person in IBM, I think. So, uh, <laughs> you, you know, so every interaction, every, everything, every piece of data that the customer captures about you may not be valuable at that moment, but something combined with something else might be interesting that they think, hey, you know, um, you had a life event in this area, maybe there's something interesting that we can offer you here on the other side of the company, right? And so, you know, recognizing that, you know, we're complex people, segmentations don't quite capture us. I still get offers for, you know, credit cards that I don't need because I fell into a segment probably, right? Uh, you know, marketing efficiency. Can I market to you more carefully to actually save money? And I can do more with a fixed number of uh, marketing dollars, right? So let me talk about new, you know, <clears throat> traditional organizations are deathly afraid of new companies because they're starting with this, right? You think about Facebook, for example. You think about um, uh, payment system, you know, PayPal, right? As an as a bank, right? You think about um, all these new companies that have started in the last five to ten years. They don't have the burden of their legacy systems. They don't have the burden of their legacy products, their silos of information. They've been able to start fresh, new, fresh and new. And so, you know, the the organizations that are they've been around longer are working extra hard to keep up with these startup companies you know you hear about fintechs for example um, so really that whole picture about you know 360 degree view of a customer um, is really about how to make every customer feel like they're number one and there's actually you know lots of examples of this we actually have one uh, this one is a large brokerage firm that we work with they have 20 million customers how do you make every single one of them feel like you know them inside out and know exactly what it is that they need, right? And it's not about being creepy, it's about having lots of value to offer. Right? So here's another example. Um, big data enables new kinds of products and competitive strategies, right? Nationwide is uh, one of the largest insurers in North America, and we work with them. And um, you know they got 16 million policies. They got lots of number one provider of public sector and retirement plans. Number one insurer for farms and ranches. Um, so so you know a lot of they're a big insurer, right? And what they want to do was do this thing called Smart Ride, which is you you put this device in your car, and if you agree to let them monitor your driving habits, they may offer you a discount, right? They tell you, you know, your rate won't go up because you're a crazy driver, maybe more crazy than we thought. But you know, if you are a good driver, we can offer you, it's free first of all, we'll give you a discount, no surcharges, so we won't increase your rates, right? And you know, we can offer you up to 40% off, right? And, and this is a competitive, imagine, you know, what's the best kind of business to be in for insurance? It, it, it's the kind that never pays out, right? And you think about who actually will be willing to put this device into their car, is probably because they're a pretty safe driver and they're ready to prove it, right? And so this gives you a segment in your customer base that gives you a competitive advantage. And now you'll start to see every insurance company start to come up with this, right? So we can't do this if we didn't have the ability to collect mounds and mounds of data somewhere and actually analyze it. And it was very expensive to do this, uh, you know, just going back a few years. So the things that they look at are mileage, time of day, heartbreaking, fast acceleration, and they don't, they promise they don't track you where you're going. There's no GPS on it. So um, I actually have one vehicle that has this device in it, and they keep telling me they're gonna save me 16% off. Not nationwide, but as a Canadian company. Um, this is a portal that you could go to Smart Ride, for example, and see you know, how many heartbreaking events you have, miles driven, fast acceleration events, nighttime driving. And they'll say, oh, okay, we think we can offer you 26% when you renew. 